Hey guys, how's everyone doing? Hope you're well. Uh, hope it's warmer where you're at than it is here. As promised, or well, a couple of you said that you'd really love to see the 660 tore down that blew up. Um, I'll look back through some of my trashed videos and see if I can find the footage of it giving up the ghost. But um, I even have a little footage of the thing running. I've got about half an hour here. We're going to see if we can tear it down, get something done. Make sure you guys are in frame good. Very close enough. Um, done drain the bar oil out of it or lack thereof. Like I said, I hope I have everything set in here to do this. If not, I'll have to just pause the video to hunt whatever I may or may not need. It's pretty tickled with the little home light. If you've not seen that, you're welcome to watch the video. It is freezing cold out here. And lo and behold, um, it come time to put it back together and I'd be like, where in the world's that thing at? But if you hadn't watched the video of the little home light, welcome to do that. I did not expect it to pick up what it did. Um, there's something I like to do with these lines. Just put an old bolt in it. Or the easiest saw there is to get the carb off of. I'm saying that, and that lever is giving me a fit. There it is. Come out of there. It's kind of funny, knock on wood, these farmer tech carburetors, it seems the ones that come in the kit. They're almost always good. I'm going to say that and then one will give up the ghost and next trip out, but it seems like the ones that you uh, just buy on eBay or somewhere are usually garbage. <laughs> They're a hit or miss. It's really cold in there, guys. Too cold to be doing this nonsense, but kind of want to see what's going on with this thing. And there's nothing wrong with tearing one down with the impact driver. Um, I don't even know why there would be controversy about that. I've even put them together. With it. This one's a little 12 volt Dewalt. Real powerful. Um, I think it's rated at 20 foot pounds or so. So, and I've yet, and I've busted another T27 T handle bit or whatever you want to call it. I was torquing the head bolts down on this saw actually and broke it, but um, took a flat file, filed the end of it, and it seems to be a okay again. reused basically a bunch of junk in it. I did not expect the thing to perform the way that it did. And when I say it's cold guys, my hands are freezing. That's why I'm kind of shaky. And I'd normally have the radio playing, but I'd looked and I've got my head uh, nine copyright strikes and they were all on the radio. <laughs> But only three or four of the videos were saw videos, and they wasn't even anything that had a lot of views. So, no more radio on the video, guys. Sorry, I apologize, but 
um, is what it is. Um, we don't want to piss off fine folks at YouTube. And I always have a fit out of these damn things. Where it's cold, they're going to be real nice to get out. If they're warm, it's not that bad. You'd think, being they were just put in there, it wouldn't be that bad. I've got a little tray here under my desk that I'm putting bolts and things in. They're not bolts, but uh, pieces to the saw. But back on that home lot, um, I've got new rings and new seals here. I've still got them over here in the pack they came in. Um, I'm going to order a... Well, may not. I've got a set of crankcase that may not need disassembled, but we're going to do a from the ground up build on one. It'll probably be this spring. Paint it up nice. My wife's actually wanting me to do a saw purple and black with some of the paint that's left over from my daughter's car. Really thinking about doing that. sure some people won't be a fan of that. Those are normally not that hard to get out. That tells you, if, if anything, that's to tell you how cold it is right now. If I work in here tomorrow evening, there'll be a fire built. smartest thing in the world to pry up on that coal that hard, but whatever it is, what it is. No shit, that was really that hard to get out. Hopefully the few on the other side are a little easier coming out. This thing's just going to be a pain in the ass everywhere. People worry about these falling apart. I really don't have problems with stuff falling apart. Wow. And on that saw, I'm sure... Um, uh, in a larger piece of wood you'd be able to tell a little more difference um, what we knock six seconds off cut time in that um, log it was nothing great but um, realistically kind of a normal size of wood that someone would cut with one of those and like I said, I gotta pause you guys and get a socket. I just thought I had everything I needed. It is what it is. Some little cringe at the way I remove these, but I've done it forever. You have to hit them. Sometimes you can just pick those and they'll come off, but they do make a tool that just threads in. It's probably the better way to take it off, but uh, we had to whack that one kind of hard. Let's see if the threads are still good. Oh, uh, yeah, we're still fine, guys. But some of them you have to end up whacking them a lot harder than others. Um, it being cold has a little to do with it, probably has a lot to do with it. Get our keyway out, it would have just fell out. 
Alright, what now? Let's move to the other side. We might as well yank the muffins off while we're here and the dogs. everything here to rebuild this and that sounds crazy having to rebuild a new saw. Um, I went ahead and ordered a crankcase gasket bearing still. Um, basically everything you'd need to redo the bottom end of it. I'm up in the air on reusing the cylinder that I have on it. Um, if that tells you anything at all how much oil it was chugging through it. We could have a little bar and chain with it, I suppose. If I can find those clips, I'll try to put them in, but if not, you'll have to forgive me. Wow. As you can see, I open all of that up, cut the bathroom out of it. I don't do it on them all, um, but these new mufflers are really easy to get to the spot welds, which I will say the Chinese are getting better with their spot welds on stuff. I do have a different cylinder. We actually got a nice highway big bore to hop in. I don't know if it's going on this saw or uh, going on another. I'm undecided. We probably will just do it on this one. How do we have it? That new 20 volt Dewalt was a powerhouse. That was my Christmas present from my wife. It came with a drill. Um, I have this smaller 12 volt, but the older 18 volt stuff I've had better part of six years. I think Norris will make six years on that. We put a roof on the house and I went and bought a new screw gun. <laughs> it's the only way to go. Or at least in my opinion. So <laughs> that screwdriver is a little big. <laughs> that was stupid. We got another package in from Simple Man. Got a few saws. Um, got a 21, I think it's an 86 Johnser. We're going to eventually do from him. We're still kind of rounding up some parts. Um, a few other little saws in it he sent to me. We'll eventually get to. Plenty, plenty of projects on top of the projects we already have. I'm sorry I'm not being real detailed with this tear down. It just, I'm just trying to rush and get it done, honestly. Which is not smart. I don't real I don't recommend anybody rushing anything. Yeah, she's powerhouse. One guy told me he'd actually watched one of my videos where I'd hammered the clutch on with the impact. And uh Said he actually broke his new clutch. You don't have to hammer it down that hard. Um, I'll usually just bump them with one of these, which is like I said, 20, 22 foot pounds, and set the chain brake first time I start it, and it usually tightens itself up. That's just some little tips, I guess, a lot of people won't tell you which really ain't nothing special, but we're going to get into some stuff on porting, and again, I try to trying to be positive with the channel, but I see a lot of just crazy stuff, people not wanting to share information. 
acting like all of this is some dang big secret or something. None of these guys are reinventing the wheel. Um, you know, everybody has their own little twist that they do to their saws. Um, like I said, no one's really reinventing the wheel on it. It's just stuff people have done for decades. Of But like I also said, um, we've stopped watching a lot of saw stuff. Um, some of it I watch, my blood pressure just cannot handle it. <laughs> I've watched some stuff and I swear it seems like my IQ level dropped at the end of it. And I've about quit reading comments, people giving advice on building saws that have never built one. You know, don't do this, don't do that. So-and-so, it screwed their saw up. Um, unless you've done it yourself, <laughs> it's probably best just keep your mouth shut about it. Um, but that's just me, you know, whatever, to each their own. We'll get that later. And you can see she's been used some. <laughs> I put a tank and a half of fuel on that top end. And then it just let go out here in the backyard. I just threw the piston in the trash. I just will try not to buy another little red barn piston. Um, sadly enough though, it looks like they've got the market on the home light stuff. And most of your Mac replacement pistons. We may unbox that highway cylinder on camera in another video. I don't know if it was one of the new fancy ones that was just one Wagner's had on eBay. Nicosil. I've never bought a highway cylinder. Oh, these things are just pissing me off tonight. They are usually never that hard to come out. I've worked on the, uh, what we call the purple people eater all day or all evening. Um, car set way too long, my daughter's car if you're new to the channel. Flex plate let go on it back uh, late fall, back in the fall. Um, was kind of waiting on the parts for it. I actually had trouble finding a flex plate for it flex plate for it and made the mistake of tearing the car down outside but I would have had to move my four-wheeler and wood splitter and uh, a lot of stuff outside to have got it here in the shop and then with all my saws that I have in here now who knows if it even would have fit Probably never got an axle out of it here. What we're doing right now is removing the handle tank assembly. Should be loose. You may have to wiggle around on it. You'll push your boot through. Get one thing. Nope, we got one, two. They're all out. Just cold. Rubber bushings don't want to let go on the cold. <laughs> That's okay. We missed one here. There we go. Our wire, it's got a little grommet on it. I 
I swear it seems like the farmer tech stuff going back through channel analytics is, believe it or not, a lot of what's built this channel. Just a mix up of everything. But seems people really like the Chinese stuff. We don't want to screw up your impulse line. I'm surprised it's actually held on that well. Don't ever pull hoses and lines off. I always try to push. Get your screwdriver in behind. Usually they'll pull right loose. There we go. They usually move a lot faster at this stuff, but like I said, it's cold. Need a good T handle. There's that one. Where's the orange one? There it is. If I knock that over one more time, I'm liable to toss it. Those are locked tightly in. It's unneeded, but I have had them back out before, believe it or not. I'm usually really bad about over torquing things, is what's weird. So we put a little blue lock tied in, letting her the thing doesn't take long to do. This was the Nicosil top end from Duke plate and everything. The ports look good in it. It just I had to cut over thirty thousandths out of the squish band by sanding, which you can about believe took forever. Um, Cause you you know you'll sand a little, pull it down and clean, sand a little, clean it. You can't just keep sanding or it'll gum up and wreck the Nicosil or whatever coatings in it. And, uh, yeah, it just took forever. I had to do that to get the port time on at 96 degrees on the exhaust, and then the intake ended up at 84. Saw runs good, though, believe it or not. It runs really good with this cylinder, but I put the other one back on it that had a little later exhaust roof opening, and... I guess made a little more compression, but saw felt lazy to me. I had it out a couple times. Um, not sure what was up with that, but that combination just felt really lazy. Um, cylinder and everything still looks amazing, but like I said, I've got a new highway big bore. I don't know, it depends on what this crankcase mess looks like. Um, let's see, I need to find a little pair of pliers or something, a pick or anything to get these out. Pause you guys, I'll bring you right back. Hopefully we can fish this out with this little screwdriver. If it fit don't bend, there we go. I've seen some guys say they don't reuse those, but... Um, I'd rather have, it, these are pretty nice clips in this piston, but I'll just tell you, I'd rather have a 20 year old OEM sir clip over one of these new China ones. <laughs> and that comes from someone that's been using a lot of Chinese parts over the last couple of years. Um, that's that Nicosil piston from Luke. Still looks fine, but it wasn't run all of five minutes. So this thing was just chugging and pumping the smoke out of it. And looking down in here, you can't see a damn thing, so. Um, maybe, maybe not. What I'm really hoping is that just something just tore part of the gasket out 
and cause the leak, but we'll just have to see. Wrong gun. I've got the uh, bearings and seals and the clutch here for Simple Man's 2150, but I'm thinking that he's wanting to. I'm thinking we're going to do a highway top end on that. That was would be a lot easier to get the brake band out. I'll probably take it out and I'm going to put it back together. We're kind of trying to do a rush job here tonight, though. Well, they don't want to just fall out, do they? That's one handy feature of these guns. Uh, they have a lot. Now let's see if they'll fall out. Like I said, it would have been easier with the brake being removed. Alright, I need I got one here. Got six crankcase bolts on these. Those fell out. They're all out but one. I'm not sure why it's not one. It'll just fall out. There it goes. Alright, we're good to go, guys. Um, we're ready to split these cases and then this video will be ended. I actually have the splitter. It's the knockoff steel one that goes. There we go. Tight fit. That's a good thing. That's what we want. We want to fit down in loosely. That's weird. We're back all the way out. She's not wanting to go on. Wow, that was a super tight fit on that. I really hope to God I got you guys in frame good and these guns ain't blocking the view of all of this. The only reason I'm doing this is because I think it was there and said, hell yeah, I'd love to see what happened. And there's some other guys that they'd like to see it tore down. And let's face it, tear down videos get a lot of views. <laughs> I know it's boring if you backed out just a couple minutes in. Trust me, I do not blame you at all. <laughs> what do we got going on? That's something up. No. <laughs> Stupid is, stupid does. Is that what Forrest's mommy said? Guys, I could reuse that bearing. <laughs> I'm half tempted to reuse them and just keep my new ones over there. Well, this side of the case looks A-OK. -okay. Um, Bring it up in the camera. I'm not seeing a thing. Let's press the crank on out of it. I think I see the problem already. There's a crack at the top of the oil. If the, uh, we press the crank on it out and then I should be able to show you guys. But 
I don't think I'd worry at all about fixing that with some JB Weld if that's the only problem. Did I mention it's cold? <laughs> We've got more crap weather coming. We're usually only free to be able to go to the property on the weekends. On a rare occasion, we'll get over there really, really early in the morning, but it's usually only if I've got a saw that I need to run, I don't have anything here. We've got test logs here. They're not the biggest thing, but they're enough to let us know what the saw's going to do. Thing is super top fit on that 066 crank. It probably bent from me throwing it around, truth be told. Crank still feels good. And then we got a mess on the bench. Let's see. Go grab a towel and put in all of it. I swear I drained oil out of this. <laughs> that was new bar oil. It just colored that way. Um, oh wow. I don't know if that's salvageable or not. That sucks. <laughs> Should be able to see right here. That just absolutely sucks. Um, <laughs> it almost knocked the whole front out of that damn thing. Took all of the powder coating out of the inside of it. It's about busted down here. Uh, I think these cases are about 60 bucks for a set too. Not sure what to do here guys. Um, that's pretty dang bad really. It's Maybe you can get a better look at it. Maybe zoom in. Yeah, I would say the only reason it was running good is because the <laughs> the oil cap had a good seal on it, and we didn't have an air leak there. But um, yeah, I'd say those are that case is garbage. I'm not even going to try to repair that. I don't think. Um, as always, uh, this is probably just stupid, long, and boring anyway, but um, as always, thank you guys for watching, subscribing, commenting. Um, y'all stay safe, and uh, y'all have a good day.